now several tiny turtles are spending their winter growing instead of hibernating. That's right. Cat Villanzoni learned about the partnership to give them a head start in tonight's Wildlife Watch. We're here at Echo Lake Aquarium and Science Center with Steve Perrin, who's a biologist with the Fish and Wildlife Department. And today we're talking about tiny turtles. Steve, tell me a little bit about the program that's going on here. So the main focus of this program is the recovery of the state-threatened spiny softshell turtle. It's a large turtle found in Lake Champlain. And uh, my job primarily is managing these large nesting beaches that not only have soft shells, but they have snapping turtles and painted turtles and map turtles. And unfortunately, a lot of mammal predators that like to dig up turtle eggs. Uh, working in partnership with Echo at the end of the season where some of the turtles are held over the winter here in relative safety and then uh, we'll release them later. And if I'm lucky that all the uh, hatchlings start coming out of the nest starting in late August right through October and we can have thousands of baby turtles if we're lucky. And how many though do we usually have? Like what's the what's the percentage that predators or get or die off take? Oh, it varies. Some years they'll well, when I first started, they were taking almost all of them. And now at a couple of my beaches, we do really well. We've got electric fences. We've got all kinds of sorts of stuff. But all it takes is one smart skunk, and, I, and things can go south. And why do we need to make sure that these turtles, you know, actually do survive here in Vermont? What, what, is, what is their importance in the ecosystem? Well, they're a top predator, actually. They're eating uh, the, the spiny south shells. They're eating crayfish and large insect larvae like dragon dragonflies, but they're just really cool animals. But they weren't evolved for things like development of the shoreline of Lake Champlain. And so along with that development came a lot of people, but also a lot of these small predators that, like raccoons and skunks, that are really overly abundant. I can have up to 200 turtles that nest at some of these sites. It's like a lunch buffet for a raccoon or skunk that figures it out. And Steve Smith is the Director of Animal Care and Facilities here at ECHO. And tell me a little bit about, once the turtles arrive here, what's kind of the process for getting them, you know, used to being in an environment that's not out in the wild? Um, very often when we bring new animals in here, one of the things we do is we cover up the windows um, so they can be um, take their time acclimating to 180,000 people a year. Um, and then we just sort of keep an eye on them to make sure that they're healthy and, and watch to see that they're going to start to eat for us. Um, and then provide any of the veterinary care that we need. And the veterinary care that we provide isn't just us attempting it, it's us reaching out to the zoo and aquarium community throughout the world. And if we have an issue with any of our animals, we can reach out and get responses from veterinarians from major aquariums in the U.S. What are some of the, uh, the challenges with overwintering uh, a turtle? Well, it's just any animal that we keep here. Um, our, our goal here at ECHO is setting longevity records for everything, keeping everything as healthy as possible. So. Um, we have a large collection here, so the challenge for Jen and Shannon, the two animal care staff, is observations and then, you know, getting on things as soon as they see issues. Um, we could have bullies in the exhibits and we need to manage social situations or we could see the start of an illness and the sooner we catch it, the better, better off we are. When you're dealing with a neonate, it's different than just medicating an adult, so it's even more of a challenge in dealing with these turtles themselves. And how much do they grow, you know, in the months that they spend? here at Echo? They come in at about what size and they leave it about what size? I, I, I guess they come in a little bit bigger than a quarter and then they pretty much double in size by the time we release them. So that maybe they're beyond the bite size of some of their predators. The Head Start, does that give them a significant advantage over the counterparts that did not spend the, the winter growing? Well, the only thing I can say to that is that those that hibernated are just going to be smaller when they come out of hibernation, so they still will be bite size. And what is the reaction from the visitors who come and who see the exhibit like this behind us and, and really look at these, you know, tiny turtles? It's it's a very popular program that we have here, and, and I think it's, in, it, it's popular for a variety of reasons. One, they're babies. Everybody loves babies. Um, and two, it's a real program that's going on in the state. It's not just animals in captivity. There's really something going on in Lake Champlain and the surrounding areas to try to work with this species, to try to save these species. So there's that connection. 
And if you'd like to help, there's an easy way to do that. When you do your taxes, you can check the box to donate to the non-game wildlife fund. That's where Perrin gets the money to help with his turtle saving efforts. Wow. Well, Vermont